Carl Franz and Reichland have had an update in 5.0. Carl's faction mechanics, especially the electoral machinations, are extremely powerful now. You can recruit units instantly, instantly boost a province's population, spawn temporary armies to help friendly empire factions, you can instantly boost an elector count's fealty, and more. Buildings have been reworked, notably gunpowder units and artillery units have been separated. Uh, initial hero recruitment has been moved to tier 2 to give you earlier access to heroes, although increasing hero capacity still requires a higher building tier. And there have been a few other tweaks. Reichland now has access to full Warhammer 3 style diplomacy with all of the Empire Great factions. Empire. So they can become military or defensive Empire. allies, you can build outposts, there. recruit allied recruitment from the other electors, you can also move through allied electors provinces and get replenishment in allied territory. Also gives allied vision, so you can actually see what's going on in the Empire if you ally with all the states. All Empire factions have a new post-battle option, Praise Sigma, that allows them to get post-battle replenishment from any enemy, not just when they're fighting other Empire factions. And this makes them a lot more dynamic and mobile because you can keep attacking enemies, replenishing your troops from your captives, and then attacking again the same way that High Elves and Dark Elves can. The Imperial Authority meter now just reflects how many Empire regions are owned by Empire factions. Any region that's got one of these Empire region markers will count. Currently we're on 56. We retake Karaburg and that goes up by two points. I think capitals and fortresses are also just worth two points. And as long as Empire factions control most regions and your Imperial Authority is higher than 50, you'll get a small buff to growth and control. If you have 76 or more points, you'll get 10 growth and plus two control, plus the mercenary replenishment for all elect account troops will be faster. If you manage to fully unite the entire empire and get your imperial authority up to 100, your mercenary replenishment time will be at minus 30%. You'll get plus 20 growth and plus three control for all provinces in the empire, and you'll get a buff of plus 10% to all income from all buildings from regions within the empire. The penalties are not so bad as well. So firstly, if you get to zero imperial authority, then all of the Empire factions don't immediately declare war on you. If you let Imperial Authority get low, you'll get 50% increased mercenary replenishment time, and you'll get minus 10 growth and minus two control to all provinces within the Empire. You want to keep it out of this and at least keep it Imperial Authority at 51 and plus. If you get Imperial Authority below 25, which is very bad that's like almost all of the empire has been taken over but then the mercenary replenishment time is going to be doubled plus 100 percent growth is going to be minus 20 and control minus four and you're going to get minus 10 percent income from all buildings so there still is that possibility that if you're really struggling and you're losing all of your territory and all of the empire regions are getting destroyed it's going to give you that extra nail in your coffin to make it harder to come back but at least all of the surviving elect accounts don't immediately declare war on you although if your imperial authority gets this low all of the other elect accounts are probably a dead already. Fealty hasn't changed too much. It just basically does three things. If you get the fealty of an elected to 10, then that will unlock a special decree that you can use to spend influence to make them confederate. If they get down to zero, then they'll secede and declare war on you. On top of that, you gain a passive amount of prestige per turn, depending on how much fealty your electors have. So this elector's fealty is at seven. He's going to give me seven prestige every turn you can see here i'm getting a total of 35 prestige passively from the fealty of all of my loyal electors you do still get the dilemmas random dilemmas can pop up at the start of each turn and you can choose between different options in the early game if you get a dilemma like this roads to renown getting plus one fealty to all of your elector counts can be helpful especially if some of your elect accounts are on the verge of rebelling if they do rebel against you and declare war then you might need to spend more prestige to stop them from going to war with you so you don't want that however the cost of a thousand prestige in the early game I think is not that great while you're still trying to save up prestige. I'd always take the plus 500 prestige. If you've got like six electors alive at the moment, if I choose this option, I'll get plus one on all of those electors for a total of plus six, which means I get an extra six prestige per turn. You can always do send aid to directly raise the fealty of a particular elector, or you can raise their relations and raising their relations will in turn raise their fealty. In order to boost your growth, you can use a special machination to give you plus one surplus growth 
in a region. Now, I do want to save up my influence so that I can eventually unlock this technology that's going to cost me 2,500 to get Conclave of Light and then 5,000 to get Empire, Emperor of the Empire. This will increase the power of all of the decree actions. So we do want to unlock this so that after that, we'll be getting bonuses from all of our decrees. In a way, maybe it's more efficient not to spend any prestige until you've unlocked those two technologies because after that, you're going to get more value out of any prestige spent on your decrees because they're more powerful. But I wouldn't necessarily rule out the advantage of actually using the decrees in the early game to give you a boost. Getting enough growth to quickly get to tier two, tier three, or tier four early could be a great advantage. As your growth surplus gets higher, it requires more and more growth to hit the next surplus. Open the gates has a cooldown of three turns. So you can um, pop it multiple times while you're trying to save up the growth to get to tier four. But just be aware that if you're close to the next tier of growth, it's going to be more valuable. To get from growth two to growth three, it probably only took me like four turns. Rather than use that growth surplus to get from two to three, I just waited a little bit longer till we hit three. Then I'm going to save eight turns by using that now. And now we've instantly got four growth. Just do a bit of diplomacy to get some extra money. If they factions at war with anybody, I pretty much always go to war with their enemies because they're so far away. Uh, except for maybe Village because he might use changing of the ways on you even though he's distant. Um, which can be annoying. But these wars that the Eastern River Lords are at war with, Dreadfleet, um, Nakai, Spirit of the Jungle, we're never going to see those factions, so may as well get some free gold out of those. We've got enough money to get our uh, get our city upgrade. Um, we've got a Noble Lord here that reduces build plan by 25%, and also a Noble Hero that also reduces build plan by 25%, so it's only going to take us three turns instead of five or six. And uh, yeah, it's turn 11, and we're already on our way to getting Altdorf City. I'll just go through all of the decrees and I'll just hover over each one so that you can see what they all do. And side by side, I'll just put the upgraded version that you'll get once you unlock the Emperor of the Empire technology so you can compare to see how different they are. A lot of these decrees, as you see, could be really powerful, especially later in the game when you've got a lot of prestige to spend and hopefully you've got the Emperor of the Empire technology unlocked to make the decrees more powerful. As I said, you may want to save your prestige to unlock the technology as fast as possible, but I would consider actually just using the decrees in the early game if you think it's going to give you a good advantage. Even the base levels of these decrees at the start of the game can be really powerful. Conscription lets you just instantly recruit units. Open the gates I mentioned so you can rush that early population growth to get up to a higher tier, get more powerful units quicker. Commendation you can use to boost Karl Franz so you can get to his unique skills quicker and also because you need to get to level 12 to unlock the quest to unlock the legendary hero Ulrika and you need to get to level 17 to unlock the legendary heroes Gotrek and Felix. Whoa, prestige ready. by the way can be awarded through dilemmas and you do get some passive prestige every turn from your loyal electors but primarily you get it from battles. Depending on the size of the battle you'll get more prestige. However much money you're awarded instantly after the battle, you're generally going to get about 40% of that amount as prestige. So for every 2.5 gold pieces you're awarded, you'll get one prestige. Bigger armies of higher value troops will give you more gold and more prestige. Note that lords are especially worth a lot more prestige. So any battle against an army that has a lord in it is going to give you more prestige. Battles against multiple lord armies will give you a lot of prestige. Yes. Empire's hero like skill bodies? trees have also been reworked. They've generally got an extra unique yellow line now. I won't go through every single skill, but basically mages have these standard skills. And then each school of magic has their own unique special skill at the end. Empire captains now have their own unique line and they can specialize in cavalry or buffing infantry. Witch Hunters have had a bit of a skill rework. They still have Accusation, but now they also get Tools of Judgment, which gives them plus 12 melee attack and melee defense when there's a terror causing unit within range. They've got, new, they've got this new skill line. Empire Generals have also had a skill rework. They've got two new unique lines. Whichever one you choose locks out the other line. Drill Instructor is more of an army buffing one, gives you campaign movement range, casualty replenishment, upkeep reduction. Uh, the Imperial Training line is more of a duelist combat lord line. 
Arch lectors are basically unchanged, I think. Although, notice as well, these portraits in here, they have nice shadows on them and they look much nicer than before. It looks awesome. Uh, but yeah, I think their skills are unchanged. Oh, Franz has also had a skill rework. Some of these skills have changed slightly. So I think he boosts Greatswords and Reichsguard more in a single skill. He also now boosts Elect Account State Troops. His other skills remain the same. One of my favorite things about this update is that you can still play Karl Franz the way that you used to play him, which is that you basically want to take over the entire empire, either by conquest or by raising their fealty to 10 and then using your machination to force them to confederate. So you basically absorb all of the other elect accounts into the Reichland faction and then they disappear as factions. You can still do that, but if you want to play a bit more of a law friendly um can probably a bit more challenging campaign that's a bit more like the way it is in the Warhammer world. Karl Franz actually is sort of in an alliance with all of the other elected counts. He doesn't wipe them out or take them over. He calls on them in times of order, assists them, and he assists them and everything. So this new system actually allows you to play that law friendly style where you don't confederate the other elected counts and there's a lot you've got a lot more tools to actually make that work the main one being that you can actually do proper diplomacy so. and um and ally with them but also all of these um decrees that you can use in your electoral machinations make it really you know much easier to sort of control your allies you can also um influence them to like you more so you can get those diplomatic treaties more easily the only real downside now to not confederating the other factions is that you don't get access to their elect account state troops um now Karl Franz actually has a special skill on the buff select account state troops. So if you don't confederate any of the other factions, it's a bit of a waste because you'll only have access to your Karaburg Greatsword state troops. There is an exploit that you can use though to get access to the state troops without confederating the other factions. What you need to do is take over the faction's capital. So in this case, Marienburg, and then you need to install one of your electors as the count of that, as, as the count of that particular province. And that will give you um, access to the elect account state troops. Then what you can do is actually trade the region back to the elect account. So we can right. talk to Marienburg and we can sell Marienburg right. City back to them, maybe in return for money or in return for diplomatic right. agreements. Then even though we no longer actually hold Marienburg, the, the general that I made the elect account, he still, the game still counts him as being the elect account. As long as he doesn't die and I don't make him the elect account of, and I don't assign him as the elect account of any other province, I'll continue to get all of the advantages of him being the elect account. You still have access to their unique legendary item and you still are able to uh, recruit their special elect account troops. As an end game reward, once you've conquered or confederated the entire empire, or perhaps if you've managed to install your generals as sort of fake electors using the exploit, then um, once you have all 13 elect account seats under your control, you can summon the elect accounts. So potentially you can use this to teleport entire armies to wherever Karl Franz's location is. That's just about everything I can think of to tell you about the Karl Franz update right now, but I'm gonna start a live stream um, of a new Karl Franz campaign tonight when this video drops. So um, we'll uh, hopefully find out everything else there is to find out as well. Thanks guys.